The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Good afternoon to all. God does nothing but by prayer and everything with it. Let us all rise up for prayer. the one day national level workshop on nanotechnology and cell lines. A smile is a universal welcome. I invite Ms. R. Bhatmani, Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, to give away the welcome address. Please, ma'am. small chair and great welcome makes a merry feast. Welcome is tradition and gratitude. On behalf of Margaret Kayseri Jain College for Women, Born and Body, it's my great privilege to welcome you all for this one day national level workshop on nanotechnology and cell lines. Organized by PG and Research Department of Biochemistry, Margaret Kayseri Jain College for Women, Born and Body. I feel very proud to welcome our secretary, C. Lickman Jain Jain Ji, sir, and other trustees in absentia, who has enlightened our minds to organize this workshop. Welcome you all, sirs. I feel immense pleasure in introducing our honorable chief guest, Dr. S. Rajesh Kumar, Associate Professor, Chief Scientist, Nanomedicine Lab, and Dr. D. Eddie Larson, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Savita Dental College. We are really thankful to him taking the time out of his busy schedule to attend the workshop. I welcome you, sir, and thank you, sir, for your acceptance, for your great support, and being with us to share your knowledge. I would like to introduce our principal, ma'am, Dr. Imbavali, who was the backbone in guiding and motivating us in all the ways with full enthusiasm right from starting of this program. And I take pleasure in welcoming you, ma'am. I expect I extend my warm welcome to our PRO, Ms. B. Shakti Mala, ma'am, and organizing committee, aid, Ms. R. Malarkodi, ma'am, and team members. Welcome you, ma'am. And also, I welcome all the aid of the department and faculty of our institution and valuable participants from other institutions. And my dear students, welcome you all. I extend my warm welcome to all the students of our college who are actively participating in this workshop. I welcome you all to what I hope is going to be great workshop and interesting experience of your life. Next, I welcome all the technical team members. Welcome you, sirs. Last but not least, once again, I welcome you all. I hope the program will be great and successful.
Thank you, ma'am, for your warm welcome. Felicitation is inspiration to others and motivation to whom you are felicitating. May I now invite our principal, Dr. M. Inbavalli, ma'am, Marudar Kesri Jain College for Women, Bonnie and Body, to felicitate the chief guest. Please, ma'am. Most respected secretary and trustees in absentia, respected today's guest and resource persons, Madam PRO, heads of the department, convener of this webinar, staff and dear students, good morning to one and all, good afternoon to one and all present here. For this wonderful webinar, I'd like to present my Sincere gratitude to our secretary for giving us approval in organizing such a great workshop for our students and staff. Also, we are all very much inspired to be the great professors as our guest for this today's webinar. Professor Dr. Rajesh Kumar, Associate Professor, Chief Scientist, Nano Medicine Lab, and Dr. Eli, Professor Dr. Eli Larison, Associate Professor, Department of Pharmacology from Savita Dental College. Really, it is a honor and help for us, sir, for both of your presence. Definitely will guide our students and staff for upgrading the year knowledge in the field of nanotechnology and cell lines. I request all the students and staff to use this opportunity because even with this, with their busy schedule, the professors are accepting our invitation and wish to share their experience to help the teaching community to upgrade your knowledge. So keeping upgradation in new technology helps us to place in a reputed organization and also will enhance our knowledge and skills. Also to achieve our goals. Best wishes to all the uh, team of the organizing committee convener of uh, PG and Research Depart of, Department of Biochemistry, Madam Malarkodi and their team, and also all the faculty who worked to uh, bring out this webinar in a great manner, great success. So I wish all the students and staff to use this great opportunity and upgrade your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your felicity. It is important to be a person of honor than be a person with health. I welcome Ms. R. Malarkodi, Head and Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, to introduce the resource person. Please, ma'am. Good afternoon to one and all present here. 
it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce the chief guest of today's section dr s rajesh kumar associate professor chief scientist department of pharmacology savita dental college chennai sir did his ph bsc in biochemistry in c abdul hakim college melvisaram in the year 2007 and msc in biotechnology in the year 2009 in muttayamal college of arts and science salem simultaneously he did dmlt course in shri vinayaga institute of medical technology arcar and mba in manonmanim sundarnar university tirunelveli in the year 2011 phd biotechnology in the year 2013 in manonmanim sundarnar university tirunelveli sir has total 10 years of teaching and research experience he has worked as an assistant professor in the department of biochemistry in adiprasathi college of arts and science velu and as a research scientist in school of biosciences and in medicine in vit velu from june 2018 to till date he is working as an associate professor in department of pharmacology savita dental college and hospital chennai to his credit sir has received an amount of 97 lakhs and 70000 from international project icmr and dst sir for research project in which he was principal investigator and co principal investigator sir has published three summary two articles out of which he has 5115 google scholar citations 2584 scopus citations 3312 research gate citations he has published two books 22 chapters 11 patents have been filed by him. sir has his international collaboration in usa australia ireland brunei south africa thailand etc he has presented many paper and poster in national and international level conferences to his credit he has organized many workshop seminars and he was invited as a chief guest in more than 30 seminars and the conferences sir has done a very great achievement in science which we cannot explain in few minutes sir we are pleased to have you an eminent scientist among us to share your knowledge thank you sir once again i will welcome you sir thank you ma'am now our resource person is here to share to share his knowledge on nanotechnology i now invite dr s rajesh kumar associate professor chief scientist nano medicine lab department of pharmacology savita dental college chennai to take to take over the session please sir yes good afternoon one and all present here is it audible yeah yes sir audible sir okay, video illaya yeah. Hello? Sir, hello sir. Na no, video, video looking na. Sir, video click. Sir on, sir on panenga sir video. Sir please on your video sir. Yeah. Okay sir, now clear sir. Uh, is it okay? Hmm. Yeah yes sir yes sir. Yeah good afternoon one and all present here. Hmm. Thank you for your uh, <coughs> introduction ma'am. Thank you, and sir. Thank you so much, uh, management of uh, Jain College. Shall I yeah. share my screen? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That would have disabled Pandar Gan, I think. Share screen uh, enable Pandar Gan. Okay, sir. Sir, working, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, yeah, okay sir. then. Yes. It's okay. Good afternoon, honorable presenter. Uh, and my topic is nanotechnology. 
and i think many of the students attended my many conferences my talks i think okay already uh, so many people know rajesh kumar nanotechnology scientist in the basic introduction and all i think i think maybe maybe some pgs and uh, third year second year ug students know okay we will start my session and uh, introduction to nanotechnology we know that people most of the people are telling nanotechnology nanotechnology so okay what is nanotechnology screen full arga okay oh, ma'am screen yeah, pakka yeah, yeah. share agida yeah yes sir yes sir now okay sir yeah okay right then. basically we know that nanotechnology nano the term nano is uh, not a small nano is very 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 small you know that 10 power minus 9 is small like uh, see just you can think uh, if or uh, we will cut the 1 meter material into 1 10 lakhs to 1 crore pieces you 1 meter material into 10 lakhs more than 1 uh, crore piece. if you cut it then the material is known as nano material nano material is uh, i told you know that is not a small very 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 small okay see by using this technology we are planning to develop lot of uh, biomedical applications nowadays okay in that uh, nano technology is see just you can uh, see this the current uh, research shows that 1 tb that is 1000 gb memory card uh, which was developed by indian scientist you know that what are all the memory cards we are using now this is uh, like uh, 32 gb 64 or 120 or 500 we know that in the same size one of the srm university scientists developed one memory card with the memory capacity of 5000 gb to uh, like a 10 tb tb you know that terabyte and uh, in that he developed uh, 5000 to 10000 gb memory card in the same size just you can think by using that memory card we will store all the information so oh, those who are uh, in world wide how many people are living their names we will store it in a single small memory card with all the information so how can it possible that is possible because of nanotechnology okay to convert big material or macro material or micro material into nano material for that we are using one technology that technology is called as nanotechnology okay yeah, you know that uh, uh, some uh, 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 watches and all we are using that is nano based technology watch you know that very very small in size in the watch itself we will access whatsapp uh, some like uh, social media apart from some other applications in the mobile itself we are accessing lot of applications just you can think without any buttons without any very big system like a computer a keyboard so to any mouse and all just we are accessing all the information in the small mobile phones or small watches that is not a small watch that is called as smart watch for that we are using the technology is known as nano technology you know that recently some of the company like i think samsung developed one foldable laptops you know that foldable laptop in the sense not just like folding of that laptop what we are using now just that mobile itself will fold mobile you know that uh, the size of the mobile is already mobile what we are using is very very small that will fold it and just will keep in our pocket center then we will use it for our application like that fold double how we will fold the electronic materials that is not just you can think that is a very very wondering things no that was possible because of nano technology okay apart from in uh, uh, by uh, uh, not only developing of uh, materials and nano based technology for the people we have to reduce the cost what is the main use of research to the people why we are doing a research lot of research what why we are doing just main purpose of the research is uh, what i am thinking three major thing first one is low cost to like to reduce the cost of the material or cost of the uh, thing what we are using and then eco friendly and then advanced one without any side effects we are planning to develop sort of materials and we will do okay 
சி லைக் இன் டூ ஜிபி மெமரி கார்டு இந்த இயர் ஆஃப் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டிஸ் இட் வில் பி எயிட்டி தௌசண்ட் டாலர் எயிட்டி தௌசண்ட் டாலர் ஜஸ்ட் கேன் திங்க் அண்ட் இந்த நைன்டீன் நைன்டீஸ் டூ ஜிபி மெமரி கார்டு இஸ் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் டாலர் யூ நோ தட் ஹண்ட்ரட் டாலர் இஸ் செவன் தௌசண்ட் லைக் தட் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் டாலர் மீன்ஸ் ஃபோர்டீன் தௌசண்ட் யூ லைக் டு ஸ்பெண்ட் இந்த நைன்டீஸ் ஃபார் த டூ ஜிபி மெமரி கார்டு நவ் யூ நோ தட் டூ தௌசண்ட் டென் ஃபைவ் ஜிபி த்ரீ ஃபிஃப்டி ருபீஸ் டூ ஜிபி மெமரி கார்டு இந்த டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி தேர்ட்டி டூ ஜிபிஸ் த்ரீ ஃபிஃப்டி ருபீஸ் ஹவு 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 தட் வாட் இஸ் கட் அண்ட் பிஹைண்ட் திஸ் அண்ட் வாட் இஸ் வாட் ஆர் ஆல் இன் பேக்ரவுண்ட் ஸோ மெனி ரிசர்ச்சர்ஸ் ஆர் வாட் டு டு டெவலப் அ லாட் ஆஃப் திங்ஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் வாட் வி ஆர் யூஸிங் நவ் தட் ஆர் டெவலப் பை அர் ரிசர்ச்சர்ஸ் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த்ரீ திங்ஸ் ஆல்ரெடி ஐ டோட் தட் இஸ் லோ காஸ்ட் லோ சைட் எஃபெக்ட் and then see without side effect uh, people will say that there is no side effect in that uh, medicine or whatever it is they what they are telling is that is impossible because we are enter into the artificial world in the artificial world if we will not use any natural uh, things uh, in the application point surely it may cause side effect so that what researchers are doing researchers are reducing the side effect that's all Okay. And then uh, in the uh, workshop, uh, see, uh, this is the first time uh, I'm giving talk in the webinar workshop. Already given talk for, a, uh, what to say, conference, uh, seminars, uh, like that. But in a workshop means, uh, we know that workshop means we want to work. So only it is called as workshop. So here I am going to work and show you what we are working now. And you have to learn something, I think. how to prepare nanoparticles nano composites and all in that what is the basic steps in nanoparticles see why we want nanomedicine then in the previous slide i told the what is the advantages of nanotechnology to this world see what is the advantages of nanomedicine what is mean by nanomedicine see i told we would like to develop a very very small medicine which contains lot of application okay <coughs> see in the form of nano particle nano material we are doing research in uh, nano medicine we would like to develop very small medicine with less side effect with eco friendly technique we are going to use it for the preparation of nano medicine see for example uh, you know that uh, so many medicines we are using our lot of side effects are there okay so in that to in the development of nano medicine just see what are the commercial medicine we are using now is if it is causing damage within 10 days means within 10 days what are the medicine it will be we will continue to use it for 10 days or one month or 60 days or 90 days surely it may cause some side effect to the parts see we will take medicine for a liver uh, it may be cause damage in the kidney maybe i'm telling that based on the medicine it may happen so by using nanotechnology what we will do we will develop a nano medicine with side effect see if it is a normal uh, medicine a may cause damage in 30 days by using nano medicine it may cause damage at 60 or 90 days so before that we would like to uh, cure the disease whatever it is okay so for that all to prepare nanotechnology to prepare nano particles nano composites nano formulation the basic step is we would like to prepare the nano particle we would like to characterize the particle and application part the three major steps are there in the preparation of nano particle in the form of nano medicine okay. see previously people sir uh uh people sir uh, used to uh, synthesize the nano particles by using physical methods like microwave radiation uh, mechanical milling like that methods they have used after that they used chemicals for the synthesis of nano particles you know that in the physical method that will be high cost chemical method it will be a lot of side effects because for developing uh, advanced medicine if you will use the chemical means the so chemicals uh, normally the uh, uh, main reason for the side effect so to avoid this 
in our lab in our nano biomedicine lab we are developing nano particles by using plant extract natural resources we are planning to use it for nano particles synthesis natural resources in the sense plant materials marine algae uh, microbes like bacteria fungi we are using for nano particles synthesis see already in the previous slide itself i told why is what are the uh, medicines we are using nowadays may cause lot of side effects to the human being so why because people are taking medicines like a food but you know that uh, food also cause some problems to human beings food in the sense and uh, the tamil people should say alavuthu mundina namudanu anje another even adu vandu epdi apatta or food ah andalu sari medicine ah andalu sari nam nariya foods and the medicine setup surely it will cause some side effect to human being so you know that uh, already i told that medicines chemotherapy patients are you know if for cancer patients la pathina you will easily identify avanga vandu or cancer patient da abindrad easy identify pannirala epdi identify pannanum abindra அவங்களோட நேச்சர் அவங்களோட லுக்கை பார்த்தோன்னே நமக்கு வந்து கெட் சம் ஐடியா ஓகே இவங்களுக்கு ஏதோ ப்ராப்ளம் இருக்கு இவங்களுக்கு ஏதோ டிசீஸ் இருக்கு அப்படின்னு சொல்லி அப்பார்ட் ஃப்ரம் ஒரு கேன்சர் பேஷண்ட்ஸை வந்து பேஷண்ட்ஸ்க்கு மட்டும் பேஷண்ட்டாக இருக்கும்போது லைக் அவங்க வந்து அவங்களுக்கு கேன்சர் இருக்குன்னு தெரியல ஒரு கட்டத்துக்கு மேலே ஃபைண்ட் சம் கேன்சர் வீ நோ தட் ஓகே இஸ் அஃபெக்டட் பை சம் டிசீஸ் அந்த டாக்டர்ஸ் வந்து இதில் அஃபெக்டட் பை சம் கேன்சர் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிடுறாங்க ஆஃப்டர் தட் அவங்களுக்கு கீமோ தரப்பி இருப்பாங்க chemotherapy during the chemotherapy you know the side effects then mudila nare per ku vande hair fall la bayangaramaa irukum the face skin then or changes will find that that avanga edukra chemotherapy vande cancer cure pannadhu first issue but we can cause them side effects also okay avanga normally you know ipo vande or liver cancer kaga or patient vande drug edukranga appadina some some other uh, um body parts also get affected due to the chemical that is chemo means due to the drug it has some side effects to the people so uh, in that stage where we are uh, standing we are we are want to develop one good medicine and a good uh, advanced medicine without side effect apart eco friendly so uh, that only i told we need eco friendly low cost and less side effect medicines to the society so many nano particles uh, are developed uh, previously and uh, it is in the form of globular uh, biological macromolecules and uh, examples are liquid methods in the different polymeric nano structures protein constituents ribonucleic acids nano particles carbon dot nano diamond carbon nano tubes apart from graphene uh, like uh, apart from some metal nano particles we are developing in our lab that is silver nano particle gold nano particle and then uh, some other ion of the nano particles are uh, developed in our the nano particle not only used in uh, uh, curing of diseases or that is a treatment that will be used in a diagnostic also the nano particle should be having some characters like biodegradability biocompatibility control back value system and the uh, in our lab mainly we are developing nano particle based drugs for anti microbial therapy you know that micro based diseases are there in our body from top to bottom top to bottom in the sense in the hair you know that dermatophytes will form well, what are all the things in morning to uh, night what are all the things we are using in morning and just you can wake up and we are using fruit paste and brush why we are using fruit paste that will be a anti microbial thing we are using soap and shampoo why we are using shampoo shampoo will kill dermatophytes so from that shampoo soap and what are the remaining things so many uh, dresses we are washing why we are washing our dresses just you can remove the dust as well as the um, what it may give some smell that is it controls the micro which is present in the um, uh, cloth material center so apart from just you can see like that uh, you know the shoe and socks also we are using and the socks we run one hour on the toilet club in our kitchen we are going to what is the reason the unwanted microbial growth in that particular thing okay like that 
from morning to night what are all the things materials we are using most of the materials we want to control the unwanted growth of the microbe okay so only uh, that uh, in, in our lab we are mainly targeting antimicrobial nanoparticles apart from our uh, nanoparticles we are using it as a bone cement and uh, prosthetic materials and uh, wound dressing materials and uh, i told those uh, nanoparticles not only used in application part uh, like uh, treatment part we are using for diagnosis also okay so in that antimicrobial application how the nanoparticles are killing the microbe See, okay, if you will use it for uh, shampoo, means that shampoo will kill the dermatophytes. That dermatophytes, that is antimicrobial application. How it kills that microbes in so many ways, like the cell wall synthesis, inhibition, oxidative stress, inactivation of protein synthesis, inhibition of enzyme activity, and hinder other the biofilm formation, modifications in essential protein, penetration of cell membrane. So from the starting from this actually penetration of cell membrane. And then incorporation into the DNA base, like the nanoparticles are uh, very involved in the activities in the different forms. Okay, these are all some smart pills, and I'll see. I I think I have explained so many basic things about nanoparticles, and I would like to show some other uh, uh, presentation to you. What we are actually doing in our lab. Actually, this is my PhD presentation. Okay, let's see uh, what is the different types of the uh, nanoparticles we are using for um, uh, the different sources we are using for biosynthesis of nanoparticles like the biochemical products like uh, curcumin, uh, like bioactive compounds we are using it for nanoparticle synthesis, plants, algae, yeast, bacteria, fungi, flowers. Uh, apart from virus, also people are using it for the nanoparticle synthesis. Apart from this, is the exact process of nano particle synthesis. See here, I have mentioned marine algae. Instead of marine algae, we are using plant extract. Plant instead of plant, the see many of your faculty members and many PhD scholars are synthesizing nano particles by using different types of plant extract, and then they dried. And the two different ways will synthesize nano particles. First one is uh, fresh plant mediated nano particle synthesis. Next one is dried plant nanoparticle synthesis. See, nanoparticle synthesis, what are all the plants we are using? Just you know, in your food material, what are the things you are using? Like coriander and uh, what is that? Uh, mint. Like mint, directly we will use it, mint for a nanoparticle synthesis. And next, uh, next way, we will dry it and make it as a powder. By using the powder, we will synthesize nanoparticles. After the nanoparticle synthesis, uh, we will, uh, uh, what, what nanoparticle exactly you want? If you want silver nanoparticles, we will use silver nitrate as a uh, uh, precursor for the nanoparticle synthesis. If you want gold nanoparticles, we will use gold chloride as a precursor. Zinc oxide nanoparticles, we will use zinc sulfate, zinc nitrate, zinc phosphate as a precursor for the zinc oxide nanoparticle synthesis. After nanoparticle synthesis, we want to characterize it, we want to prove whether it is nanoparticles or not. So we want to prove, surely we want to prove. Then only people may mm, accept that is exactly nanoparticle. After that, what we'll do? We'll do uh, characterization. See, just this is one marine algae mediated nanoparticle. See, first A. A is the plant extract. Second one is initial color. Third one is nanoparticle formation. See, this is called visual observation data. Next one is UV visible spectroscopy, and uh, by using UV visible spectroscopy, you will just prove whether nanoparticles formed or not. This is the preliminary characterization of nanoparticles. And then, what is this? This is TEM, transmission electron microscopy image. By using the transmission electron microscopy image, we will analyze what is the size of our nanoparticles, what is the shape of our nanoparticles. And next is XRD, X ray diffraction assay. By using X ray diffraction, we will analyze the crystalline nature of your nanoparticle. First one. What about second one? Second one is uh, by using some formula, we will analyze the size of our nanoparticle by using XRD. And third one is FTIR, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. By using that uh, spectroscopy, uh, we will analyze that. Uh, what is the, because we are using plant extract, in that plant extract, 
which chemical group responsible for the nanoparticle synthesis was analyzed by using FTR. So this is a gold nanoparticle, and uh, that nanoparticle uh, by using that nanoparticle, I have tested for uh, antibacterial activity, and uh, this is fungus and the fungal activity. This is the zone of inhibition image. And apart from I did uh, enhanced antimicrobial activity. This I will mix my nanoparticle with the commercial antibiotics, and they will make. Anti enhanced antimicrobial activity. Apart from I did uh, anti cancer activity about the cancer cell line, and our next speaker, my friend, will explain very, very, <laughs> very, very informative uh, to you about our cell line. And I would like to show some of our uh, nanoparticle synthesis process happening in my lab. Let's see some videos I would like to show you, live videos. The students are uh, learning. This is actually one nanoparticle. Very visible. This is a zinc oxide nanoparticle. We have prepared by using uh, Anona Muriketa. This is uh, multi magnetic stator. Going on. At the time, we will synthesize 10 different uh, uh, nanoparticles or 10 different uh, solutions in this. Uh, this is selenium nanoparticle. This is multi magnetic stirrer. And uh, this is magnetic stirrer. By using this, you are developing uh, gel. I think you see this. We have the uh, synthesis. We will analyze by using this UV visible spectroscopy. Yes, I think you see the uh, sample holder. It was connected with the system. Apart from uh, for this nanoparticle, we are analyzing this is. I think you see this. This is an uh, antimicrobial activity of nanoparticles. Apart from in our lab, we are doing a zebrafish toxicology study. This is wild type uh, zebrafishes. Is it clear? Ma'am, you are not going to I think this is male. This tank is male. This is female. I am okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Now, video is clear. Clear, sir. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Yeah, clear, sir. Yeah, okay, then. See, yeah, this is uh, anti-inflammatory activity and uh, anti-oxidant activity we are doing in our lab. See, these are all some uh, fish case study for ecotoxicological study. We are using guppies fishes. And these are all uh, 24 hours babies. That's visible, I think. And this is my office, <coughs> office and lab. See, like that, uh, we are preparing nanoparticles and we are analyzing it. And I have uh, one more lab also. Uh, that was a uh, nano microbiology lab. We are doing all types of, I told you know, that is some anti microbial is our major application part. We have prepared different types of nanoparticles and tested against the different types of uh, pathogens like oral pathogens, uh, gastrointestinal pathogens, urinary tract infection pathogens, and some moon pathogens also. We are doing. Okay. Uh, by using the nanoparticles and nanotechnology, and the people are developing smart pills. So nowadays, uh, they are developing, and uh, nanotechnology market is very, very high in this part. 
know that in by 2024 it will exceed nanotechnology 125 billion dollars 125 billion dollars uh, business will be there for uh, nanotechnology based products not only in the nano medicine that will be in the um, uh, material science department nano based particles are developed in our days in that uh, see different types of advanced pills uh, advanced just you can see just we will take the uh, pills and that will be entered into our body it may move on to throughout our body and uh, it is used for so many treatments okay and uh, apart from in that uh, different types of capsules nano paste capsules people are developing and uh, these are all under uh, research and it may reach us uh, as soon as possible and the nano patch vaccine this is see just you can see nano patch and uh, smartphone uh, by using our smartphone we just we, you know that by using uh, that smart watch will uh, check our uh, heartbeat you know that some technologies are that we will analyze our, uh, apart from by using the smart watch people will analyze in during night times if just you can in your kaila and the smart watch put it in the podo night thing at the money keep an end money keep or kind of running yeah for a negative one kind of running yeah or money one past one kind of running into the work to analyze fund allow and then the smart watch is developments are there apart from nano patches and the vaccines coat or nano patch they are used apart from nano technology based market is very very high that is used in so many applications this is a now why we want to use nano particles that is used for that uh, targeted drug delivery system to avoid the uh, apart from nano technology we will use it Uh, in a uh, dentistry field uh, this is major three area of uh, anti microbial nano particles therapeutic nano particles and the reinforcemental nano particles in our lab itself we are preparing silver nano particles titanium oxide nano particles zinc oxide based nano particles copper nano particles titosin for the application of anti microbial apart from in therapeutic area we are doing solid lipid nano particles in periodontology and the dendrimers in the biomineralization area So this is uh, in my lab uh, already i told and i'll show you something to you this is a nano particles nano composites and nano formulation nano formulation is a combination of nano particles with bioactive compounds uh, known as uh, nano formulation okay uh, in my lab itself we are doing different types of biomedical applications like anti microbial anti cancer and the dental products you know uh, we have a ma'am uh, in the introduction part she told no I have 11 patents now. It is uh, will reach this year. I will reach 20 more than 20. I have developed uh, different types of uh, mouthwash, toothpaste, dental varnish, dental paints by using nano particles. In my name, uh, we are looking for uh, many patents in this uh, products. Apart from we are doing aquatic uh, nano toxicology studies by using that zebra fish. I show you know that uh, tank and all. that is a uh, uh, aquatic nanotoxicology what we are using these are all some of my book chapters published in this book thank you so much every ending is a new beginning thank you so much for your uh, patient listening any doubts please ask sir ஆ மேம் என்ன டவுட் இருந்தா கேளுங்க யா ஓகே சார் ஓகே சார் சோ थैंक यू சார் थैंक यू சார் ஃபார் யுவர் வண்டர்ஃபுல் செஷன் சார் थैंक यू சார் थैंक यू सो मच பாஸ் சார் இந்த ஸ்டூடண்ட்ஸ் எல்லாம் வந்து ஒரு டாக் எடுக்கிறது பயங்கர கஷ்டமான விஷயம் நான் திங்க் பண்ணா बिकॉज आई हैव டெலிவர்ட் so many lectures in தமிழ்நாடு <laughs> 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 
Yes, sir. Zebra fish and uh, human beings. So only we are preparing uh, a zebra fish toxicology study. And uh, till date, uh, there is no ethical clearance for zebra fish. So only we are doing. Maybe next year, you could a zebra fish could a ethical clearance. Can do all. My till date, what is it? Zebra fish will work for now. I am on the ethical clearance. Illa. So only we are doing. Sir, and the next Any question doubts? is, sir, and the next question is, what is the difference between the nanoparticles composite and the formulation, sir? The nanoparticles and the name itself, particle means single particle, like a silver nanoparticle, gold nanoparticle, zinc oxide nanoparticle. Separately, we will synthesize nanoparticle that will be okay. See, if we will mix kytosine nanoparticle with the silver nanoparticle, that is called as kytosine-based silver nanocomposite. Composite generally, general term the composite means combination of two materials is known as composite. Nano formulation is formulation in that bioactive compound. If only silver nanoparticles put on a curcumin on the mix panni, our material create panna, that will be nano formulation. So that is the difference between nanoparticles, nanocomposites, nano formulations. Apart from you know, Naria materials, now we are developing. Yes, sir. Sir, another one question. Is there any antiviral nanoparticles are available, sir? Yeah, there are. Apart from now, in the slide, like, covid like, how will the any nanoparticle based therapy be done? I told you, ACS like, when they paper on publish, a research article on publish, done it. How it enters into the body and how it reacts. And that is when they a study on initiate done it. COVID leave and the nanoparticle based drug they are developing. Nanoparticle based drug and the nanoparticle coated uh, uh, drug for uh, COVID 19. Sir. sir, another one PhD scholar is asking question, sir. Is there any projects available for research scholars, sir, who are doing PhD yeah. in nanomedicine? There are so many projects are there. Nano technology on the DPT and the DST on the nano mission of being solely or a tiny division name on the established funny funny terganga. Those are apart from DST, DBT, ICML on the special call for nanotechnology and area call for slark and the PhD scholars on a guide could say the guide guy or null proposal on a PhD on the null proposal in the apply panel. If it is a two years complete content, then ICMR level under one year of call for it. But so yeah. many fellowships are there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, another one question, sir. How to interpret the characterization yes. of nanoparticles, sir? Nanoparticle characterization is uh, it is in a different uh, stages, sir. Kerala. Initially, okay. preliminarily, we will confirm visual observation. Color change, which nanoparticles in this area, just for visual observation. Panla. Next one, the UV visible spectroscopy. La, uh, one the pathana, peaks are based on nanoparticle form. Ayagla. Preliminarily, we will confirm it. After that, the nanoparticle nala, are different types of characters. Irukhi. Size, irukhi, shape, irukhi, surface, irukhi, and crystalline nature. Irukhi. Based on that uh, characters, we will analyze the nanoparticle characters. Okay, on the yeah. different instrument, the TEM, transmission electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, use funny size and shape on number determine for the XRD, VDX, and my characterization moment elements will present higher than the random on the fine form. I get so many character uh, characterization yeah. techniques are there. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 I doubt now the collaboration of the contact panel. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. One final question, sir. Is there any nanomedicine yeah, research sure, sure. going on for coronavirus, sir? Yeah, if we are doing that journal, if we are doing that journal, if we are doing that journal, publish that journal. Nanoparticles as a direct drug for COVID-19, as well as nanoparticles coated drug for COVID-19. That is the mask lay on the nanoparticle coat panni or mask on the nanoparticle coat panni in the angle on the and the virus in the prevent panda as well as. And the mask port in the lab, the body clay and try every react fundamentally research under research on the COVID 19 and Kiran area for Nathan. Yes, sir. Next year. Thank you, sir.
பரவாயில்ல இவ்வளவு பேர் கொஸ்டின் கேட்டிருக்காங்க நிறைய பேர் தூங்கலாம் நினைக்கிறேன் Good afternoon all. It is my privilege to introduce our resource person, Dr. D. Kalila Rasan, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Savita Dental College and Hospital, Savita Institute of Medical and Technical Science, Chennai. Sir did his B.Sc. in Zoology, obtained second rank in the year 2005 in Presidency College, Chennai. M.Sc. in Environmental Toxicology, obtained first rank with gold medal in the year 2007 in Dr. ALM Postgraduate Institute of Basic Medical Sciences, Chennai. Sir also did his MSc in Environmental Science, Bharadiyar University, Coimbatore and PGDCA in the year 2007. Sir applied his PhD in Pharmacology and Environmental Toxicology in the year 2017 in University of Madras and University of Catholic D. Levant, Belgium. He has started his career from the year 2015 as research scientist in the Blue Lab Molecular Pharmacology and Toxicology Division, Savita Dental College, and scientist in charge in the Medical Biomedical Research Unit and Lab Animal Center, Savita Dental College, Chennai. So, currently working as an assistant professor, Department of Pharmacology, Savita Dental College, and Hospital, Chennai. So started his research as project fellow for the consultancy project sponsored by EID Pari, India Limited Chennai in the year 2008. And then university research fellow from the year 2009 to 2010. And then DST inspired research fellow from 2010 to 2011. So what does Erasmus Mundus, research fellow on human primary hepatic stellate cell, LX2 cell line in Inocyte Catholic D11, Belgium from 2011 to 2013. So, has received around 35 lakhs from ICMR government funded project in the year 2020. He was invited as a chief guest in more than 17 seminars and conferences. So, has published 52 articles in in reputed journals and presented 12 papers in national and international level conferences. Sir has published eight book chapters. Sir has organized around 19 seminars, symposium, and workshop. Sir received many awards, such as Indra Vasudevan Award for the best research paper in cancer 
in the year 2019 most punctual faculty award in the year 2017 dr apj abdul kalam any scientist award and best academic teaching award for pharmacology in the year 2015 dr c r krishnamurthy memorial medal for outstanding student in msc environmental toxicology in the year 2017 I am very much happy to invite such an eminent person as a chief guest to share his knowledge with us. Or to sir. Thank you, ma'am. Our resource person is here to share in depth of depth about cell lines. I now invite Dr. D. Elinarasen, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Savita Dental College, Chennai, to take over the session. Please, sir. Yes. Thank you for the brief, brief introduction. And good afternoon to all and all present there. Good afternoon, sir. And let me share my yeah. Let me share my Presentation, please enable it. Faculty in charge, please enable it. Yeah. Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Yeah. Now. Now. Sir, now. Not... Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Now working. Sir. Oh, now is it audible? Sir. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, sir. One second. Good afternoon, everyone. And, and today I am going to uh, present about the sir, nanotechnology sir? application. Sir. Hello. Sir, please on your video, sir. Got it. Okay, right. Sir. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now okay, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay, sir. So, today I am going to talk about nanotechnology applications in cell culture. And uh, before going in, into that, we will see about uh, basic. Yeah. Yes. So, so coming to the history of cell culture, because most of you are from uh, uh, UG and PG background, so that I just go from um, introduction onwards. So it was begin uh, during the 1885. Dr. Rocks has uh, only put forth the theory that cells can live outside the body. So, uh, so sorry for the technical issues. And uh, so it was 1885. Dr. Ross has put forth this theory that cells can live outside the body. So that from that the cell culture was developed. And in the year 1907, Harrison uh, has uh, put forth the theory that nose can outgrow uh, out of the body. And in the year 1952, Gay is established a HeLa cell type. The HeLa cell. It is a famous cell line. Everyone knows that it is a cervical cancer cell line. And more thousands of studies were uh, undergone with this HeLa cell line. So, so this is the sequential uh, development in the cell culture field. So, 
so coming to the cell culture process cell culture process are prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells which can grow under the culture condition with it 37 degrees celsius inside the incubator with the 5% of carbon dioxide i'll show you if time permits and he is the person who is uh, who is first successfully cultivated the prognosis from a linear uh, limb plot so he is considered as a father of uh, cell culture his name is ross harris Sir, excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, your voice is not clear, sir. It's breaking, sir. Yes. Um. Okay, wait. Let me. Wait, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Sure, sir. Sir, excuse me, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, am I audible? Sir. Hello. Sir. Am I audible? So it's breaking, sir. Am I? Sir, it's breaking, sir. It's still breaking. It's not audible, sir. It's breaking. Okay, fine, fine. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, sure, sir. Yeah. Hello. Sir. Am I audible now? Yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello? Now audible. Now audible, sir. Now clear, sir. Hello? Sir, now. Sir, now clear. Oh, okay. Fine. Fine. Sorry. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yes. Fine. Okay. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. So, for the bad cell culture as. Uh, uh, Evolved after identification of antibiotics. So these three are the major ingredients which are used for cell culture. One is culture media, which contain nutrients for the growth of cell, and another one is trypsin. Trypsin is used to detach the cells from the um, uh, from the plastic surface. Okay, from the culture plus. And penicillin streptomycin is one of the ingredient is important ingredient used in the cell culture, which is a uh, Which is antibiotic, which prevents the contamination uh, from the cell culture. Okay, so these three developments are major developments in cell cultures. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Please wait. Okay, now audible, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. But the um, slides are not moving. That's why I'm waiting for. Is it moving there? Some technical issues. Please wait. Please wait. Let me share again. 
ओके सर मैं प्लीज एनेबल मैं शेयर कर दिया थैंक यू yes okay okay, okay. sorry for the that inconvenience because the system is hanging so why it is so important is so it is actually it, it provides the field to study the basic cell biology and it is useful to study the interaction between the disease because most of the disease is mainly due to the abnormal way behavior of cell so that the cell culture provides a suitable at a area to work with and also it is it is useful to study the effects of new drugs because the drug development is start with in vivo in vitro studies in vivo studies and then uh, clinical studies and um, so cancer research also in cancer research there are several cell lines that are there in which the drugs or uh, newer drugs and plant extracts are being tested and if it is being uh, tested and effective found effective in the uh, in vitro cell culture then we can take the drug with the further process that is a in vivo and clinical studies and so this is the uh, sequential uh, process of drug development we, we are here in in vitro so in vitro provides some important clues for in vivo studies so without in vitro studies you can't go for in vivo studies so because if a drug is found cytotoxic to a particular cancer cell i mean you can Say that it is having uh, anti cancer potential in, in 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 vitro so the same if you can you use it for in vivo studies to um, study the anti cancer potential against any one drug induced uh, um, the drug or chemical induced cancer so coming to the cell culture different types of uh, cells are there you would have care about primary cultures cell lines and methyl chemical stem cells etc etc so coming to primary cell culture when you should call a cell culture is primary cell culture mean whenever the cells are isolated from the tissue okay whenever the cells are isolated from the tissue you can call it primary cell culture okay and um, uh, uh, for example here you can see from this image so any tissue can be isolated from the from the animal and which can be cut and dissected and if we provide an enzyme and that enzyme will degrade the tissue so that the cells will be degraded uh, the cell will be isolated from the tissue and if you provide a suitable medium to the uh, cell then it will go so this is can be uh, if you isolate a tissue from the uh, animal then you have to provide a suitable me uh, enzyme for the de degradation of the tissues because the cells are surrounded by several tissues extracellular matrix and connective tissues so that you should uh, digest or degrade those uh, tissues to isolate the cells so if you isolate the cells and if you provide suitable medium and grow like under a specific unified condition you can uh, maintain a culture so this is what this is very very important in case of primary cells so please remember the primary cells is isolated from a tissue okay va if you isolated a uh, cells from a animal tissue or a human tissue then you can call it as a primary cells which have finite uh, life span mean it is having uh, 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 passage of uh, it will be uh, viable for 6 to 7 passages after that it won't kill die that is it is we used to call it as a finite life span okay one more type of cells is the cell line which is developed from the primary cell lines which will live indefinite number that is it will lead to 60 to 7 passages okay so this is a primary culture contain a heterogeneous population of cells so when you isolate a cells from a tissue it contain if for example if you want to isolate here uh, um, uh, epidermal cells okay so that uh, from the skin mean the skin contain fibroblast and other cells too so that the primary culture contain a heterogeneous more cells more cells may uh, epidermal cells 
and the epithelial cells and the fibroblasts, etc., etc. So by subculturing them in subsequent uh, uh, um, passage, you will get the pure population of pure cells of interest. So this is the The first one is tissue acquisition. The second one is dissection. The tissue acquisition you can get from animals or else you can get from the like, human source also. And also uh, the next one is dissection. You should cut the cell, uh, cut the tissue, and then uh, from a suitable size And there are several aseptic procedures for that I will show you. And then disaggregation. Disaggregation means after the cut or uh, dissecting the tissue, you should disaggregate the tissue so that the cells will come out. Okay, well, so that after that, you, you have to incubate the cells with a suitable culture medium. Okay, there are several culture mediums are there. And uh, so each culture medium is unique. So some cells will grow in, uh, if in some culture medium, some cancer cells, no, it will be uh, grow in DNA medium with the higher uh, uh, FPS. Yeah, FPS means fetal bovine serum. Okay, and then, uh, then it, it has to separate and purify in subsequent passages. So these are all the five steps involved in the cells isolation from the tissue. So there are four stages, as I told you earlier, acquisition of sample, isolation of tissue by dissection, and dissection and disintegration. Mechanical disaggregation we can do. Mechanical study will come out of the tissue. But uh, that will lead to the mechanical damage of tissue also. And uh, culture after seeding into culture vessel. So, so this is the one we have done in Belgium, and we have uh, we are isolating the uh, cells from the liver, human liver. Liver. You can see the human liver of 57 year old female. This one we have uh, obtained from a hospital, University of Catholic de Lavain, and we have isolated the cell. You can see apparent is fused and uh, seeding. Okay, uh, first one is the cells were um, perfused with the enzyme and the second one is the whole liver and then the third one is the mechanical seeding and the fourth and fifth one is the cells who homogenized population the solution contains cell homogenized population so um, what are importance are ethical issues must be taken care of during the expand collection whether it is animal or a plant uh, i'm sorry animal or a, animal or human uh, tissue you want to isolate uh, cells from primary culture, meaning you should go for a ethical uh, committee appearance and you should have the ethical clearance and protocol must be followed to avoid contamination because the all uh, should be performed in the aseptic condition with the, in, in the sterile in, in environment. And explants must be free of contamination so that the sample you are taking out from the hospital to the laboratory, mean it should be uh, free from contamination Handling should be under aseptic condition and human expand must be collected only after the consent from the donor. So these can, the things and all procedures you have to follow. Patient consent is very, very important. And uh, the steps involved in the primary establishment of cell culture is isolation of expand. Uh, already I told you this. And disaggregation of tissue, culture media, and physiological conditions of culture. I will show you one on uh, process through which you can understand the uh, this thing. I have already explained this thing. Yeah, so enzymatic de degradation. After you cut the tissue uh, from an animal or human mean, you can disaggregate the tissue uh, by enzymatic process. There are several enzymes are there, such as scripting, collagen, and hyaluronidase, and the spaces through which you can disaggregate the cells from the tissue so that the cells will come out of from the tissue so that you can take the cells. So there are two types of trypsination method is there. One is warm trypsination. It is a simple method. Nothing more. Uh, you, you have to uh, isolate a tissue from the animal or human and you have to put a trypsin. If you put a trypsin, the cells will, uh, the tissue will digest and it will disaggregate the cells and you have to collect the cells and you have to grow what is called that uh, uh, primary cell culture. But you should provide the proper and suitable uh, culture media. Each, uh, each cell has its own characteristic culture medium and the characteristic types of uh, 
uh, nutrition etc some self we grow in one person culture medium okay so one person fbs mean one person fbs is enough okay va so some uh, cells will grow in 10% the cancer cells will proliferate very fast so these cells will grow in higher uh, nutrient structure so that 10% fbs is provided fbs mean fetal bovine serum or fetal calf serum so there are two types of differentiation method is there one is warm differentiation and one is the uh, cold differentiation method and warm differentiation on the, the name itself is the answer the friction is added at the temperature of 36 degree celsius okay and then the cold differentiation is nothing but it is uh, the tissue is soaked in friction at 4 degree celsius for 6 to 18 hours to allow the penetration of enzyme friction is nothing but enzyme which disaggregate the cells from the tissue so that you can collect the cells so trypsin method is there edt aggregation is there so it, uh, apart from uh, trypsin we can add edta so that the cells will come out of the tissue by chelating property okay so so these are all the standard uh, the ingredient of the complete media whenever if you say complete media it should contain the media with the serum and uh, antibiotics this will provide the base and this will provide the nutrients and this will for the cells and this will provide the uh, this will Uh, avoid the, uh, it is added to avoid the contamination. The penicillin streptomyces is nothing but antibiotics. And if you see the culture media, the function is it is uh, media is used to culture tissues must be able to support the growth and choice of media. This is what I was talking about a while ago. Choice of media depends on the cell types to be cultured. Okay, and normal cells and primary cells. Now you know what is primary cultures. Uh, from healthy tissues requires uh, high amount of growth factors and uh, hormones and uh, transformed cells can synthesize their own growth factors because the transformed cells mean the primary cells can be transformed into any cells okay if you provide a suitable differentiating factors mean it it, it will provide it will convert it into different uh, for example fibroblasts can be differentiate into epithelial cells and other cells okay well, if you provide a suitable growth factors and coming to media the, there are several medias you would have yet the very uh, the common media is dmem media dmem media is uh, delbaco media if the delbaco is a person who invented the the uh, medium which is in which the uh, microbes grow and also eagles medium emem mean eagles media gmem mean glasgow media so this the choice of media depends upon the types of cells is being used and prepared media is filtered and incubated at 4 degree celsius so that aseptic mechanism should be followed and all the chemicals and reagents should be uh, kept in the uh, should keep in the uh, refrigerator within a dressing so these are all the different common cell culture media you have heard about hams is very common dmm and dmm and also very common and here if you say uh, so these are the cell culture requirements as i told you trypsin is also not only used for a uh, uh, isolate the cells from the tissue it is used to detach the cells from the uh, plast during the passage so after when you put a suitable culture medium in the plast the cells will attach to the substrate of the plastic okay so If, if you want to collect these cells, mean you have to provide a certain collagenase enzyme. That is a protein digest enzyme. So this trypsin treatment will detach the cells from the uh, cells. Thereby, it will uh, uh, it will come out. Okay. Uh, so after primary culture, so this is what the primary culture. So for example, if you take a uh, liver tissue and if you go for a primary culture then you can go for a subculture a secondary culture uh, so this is what i am talking about so if we, it is having finite number of uh, life span it will live for only limited life span so it will tolerable for only 6 uh, to 7 passages so so this is a type of primary uh, cells I, i have isolated this this is a human uh, uh, 
hepatic steroid cell passage number 3 passage number 3 human hepatic steroid cell which is present in the liver liver mesenchymal stem liver mesenchymal cells so now coming to cell lines so the difference between primary cells and cell lines so primary cells are directly isolated from the tissue animal either animal tissue or uh, human tissue the cell lines are the um, is nothing but when a primary uh, uh, cells are immortalized and transformed into cell line then it is called a cell line okay wow. so it is it involves several processes but the difference between these primary cells and cell line is primary cells you can maintain only few passages but uh, if it is a cell line you can maintain it as several passages okay the characters won't change all cancer cells are cell lines so that you can uh, uh, um, maintain for several passages okay so after you yeah, have 60 40 to 50 passages also you can maintain but each and every cell line has its own age and thereafter it will attain senescent senescent means cellular aging cell death but primary culture is only viable for few passages that is four to five passages so most cell lines grow coming to cell line most cell lines grow a limited number of generation after which they uh, aging ceases so here the the immortalization can be chemically induced the immortalization can be chemically induced characteristics of continuous cell lines when compared to primary cells are fast growth okay va fast growth uh, it, it will have a very fast growth when compared to primary cells even though you provide a, a high uh, nutrient uh, uh, media the primary cells won't grow that much fast whereas the cancer cell line our cell lines will grow very very fast and uh, so it is having the ability to grow up to a higher cell density so uh, so for example if you culture a primary cells it will take one or two weeks for a first passage but if you if you culture a cell line cancer cell line even two days or three days you can subculture so that it will grow and it will uh, attain the uh, full uh, cell density so, th- so th- these are all the some of the commonly used cell line from the human organ these are all very commonly used cell line colorectal cell line from colon cancer tissue and uh, this hd29 also colon cancer tissue t have cell line cervical cancer tissue and pc3 prostate are all of them are very uh, very common very popular a549 from lung also very very common and also due mcf and all very very commonly used commonly studied uh, uh, cancer cells and if you see this one a uh, cell line uh, so this is the cell line this is lx2 cell line in previous slide what i showed is the primary cells of hepatic steroid cell it is the cell line of the same for example listen so this is the primary cells of the hepatic steroid cell this is the cell line so which is isolated from a patient's liver and it is immortalized to cell line which is developed from the primary cells so it is have characteristics but i can maintain this for several passages but i can't maintain that primary cells for uh, uh, several passages so coming to stem cells uh, so if you see stem cells stem cells as first isolated from the bone marrow by this person in the year 1974 which is a cell which has the ability to continuously divide and differentiate into various other kind of tissue differentiation is very very important i will explain in the both kind both coming tissues and and i will explain here so so you know all these things uh, when a cells isolated from here fertilized egg it will be tortipotent 30 percent is nothing but this cell can form the embryo or placenta okay when you uh, when your cells isolated from here blastocyst inner uh, uh, lining of uh, blastocyst then this cell can differentiate can develop to form a embryo what is called as pluripotent and when these cells are ability to grow as a different types of cells so you can differentiate the inner muscles of 
blastocysts into hematopoietic cells, mucous cells, and mesenchymal stem cells. Anything by providing suitable differentiating agent. Okay. For example, if a if a cell isolated from the inner mass of blastocyst, and if you provide the suitable culture medium, then it turns into endodermal cells and mesodermal cells and ectodermal cells, such as epithelial cells. From if you want to differentiate now, you can differentiate into epithelial cells of liver, lung, etc., or monocytes and uh, cells from ectodermal organ, etc., etc. Now. Most of you don't know what is stem cells, and you would hear about stem cells, stem cells, stem cells. Stem cells is nothing but almost all tissues having stem cells. Okay, stem cells, liver is having, gingiva is having, even menstrual blood is having. Okay, menstruation, menstrual blood is having. Every cells and tissues is having the. Uh, I mean, every tissue is having the. Every organ is having the stem cells. Stem cells are blank cells. For example, in your kitchen. If you buy a empty box, plastic box, if you put it in a kitchen main, then you will call it as a blank box. Okay, wow. box blank box. So if you put tur dal in it, you can say it is a tur dal box. If you put a tur dal mean, you say tur dal box. Okay, put a channa mean if you say channa dal box. Okay, wow. so that what you are putting is matter like that blank cells. Like a blank box, so if you provide a suitable medium to to differentiate into a particular cell, it will differentiate. For example, if I have isolated here yeah, stem cells, if I want to differentiate into hepatocytes, mean I should provide here yeah, differentiating agents which are related to hepatocytes, such as hepatocytes growth factor, etc., etc. So that that blank cell which can differentiate into any cell will differentiate into hepatocytes. This is what. Stem cell does. Okay, wow. so other quality, what is called as blank cells, you can differentiate into any type of cells in the body by providing suitable, suitable differentiating agents. Next one is capable of dividing and renewing themselves, which means it will divide itself. Okay, wow. so self renewal is very fast. Fast uh, cell division will be there for a longer period of time, proliferation and renewal. So, as I told you, it is a potential to give rise to specialized cell cell. What is called differentiation? So, you can differentiate into hepatocytes. You can differentiate into astrocyte. You can differentiate into necrocytes. Any cells in the body, because in the blank cells, you can differentiate into any type of cells. So, mesenchymal stem cells are spindle-shaped cells, and uh, fibroblast-like structure. Ma, the spindle-shaped layer will be there. It will be there. I will show you. It is having self renewal and and the high proliferative capacity and sources, if you see, they, they are present in umbilical cord, placenta, amniotic fluid, endometrial polyps, menses blood, adipose tissue, etc., etc. So these are all the other sources of mesenchymal stem cells. Almost all tissues, organs in the body, and one of the simple way to isolate here, mesenchymal stem cells. So if, if anyone want to isolate uh, uh, stem cells from your laboratory, main, you can make a note of it. It's a very simple procedure. What you are going to do is the simply isolation. So human umbilical cord, because umbilical cord after delivery, you have to go for go to a person with a written consent. Like you have to get a umbilical cord with woman with healthy pregnancy, and the umbilical cord should be collected in the PBS, phosphate buffer saline. Later on, from the hospital itself, you have to supplement antibiotics because to avoid the contamination. So this much of antibiotics you have to provide streptomycin and transport. So with the antibiotic you have to transport to the laboratory. And sorry. So once you reach the laboratory, you have to wash the umbilical cord with the PBS. Once again, you have to wash the umbilical cord with PBS and cut into five centimeter segments longitudinally, longitudinally to cut to remove the blood vessels. So that under the sterile hood. Okay, well, you have to go to inside this uh, cell culture room. And, and under this sterile loop, you have to cut the tissue five centimeter square segments, and then you have to put it in the flask, which contain DMEM with a with a ten percent of FBS. Okay, so this is what standard. If you provide this uh, this thing, then the the cells will come out of from the tissue, and uh, and it will grow under the plastic surface. You can the flask. Enough, no. Simple ma. 
umbilical cord should be collected and transported to the laboratory and the poetry you have to cut it into several pieces these pieces should be transferred to the flask the flask should contain dmem medium with 10% fbs okay va so then this should be uh, uh, should be kept in a incubator co2 incubator with 37 degrees celsius disturb pannama vekkano 7 days ke ipo ipo vacha enna aguna and the tissue lend the cells will come out in the flask la vechirkingle tissue lend the cells will come out and grow in the plastic surface chinna 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 da ninge you would have put the segment so adilen the cells will come out and grow in the plastic surface okay va so that after 2 weeks the uc explants were removed ninge vecha chinna chinna segments irukku paari how to remove and then uh, adherent cells ke eppadi panuvinge you have to go for trypsin culture panni you have to remove the adherent cells and then you have to go for subsequent passage sub culture so this is one of the easiest way to isolate the um, uh, cell cells from the umbilical cord so this is a typical emission uh, campbell stem cells from umbilical cord so like your primary cells see this one so this is what the uh, emission campbell stem cells lower and higher magnifications uh, we have isolated this in brussels belgium so with the passage number 7 so this is uh, uh, as i told you almost all cells have uh, stem cells so liver also have a stem cell population this is adult derived human liver stem cells we will call this adhlsc so this is uh, we have uh, isolated from your patients so so minimum criteria so now you have isolated a cell uh, uh, the same procedure you have followed so uh, you can't directly go to the experiment so according to the international society for cell therapy they have given certain criteria to confirm whether uh, you have isolated msc or not for that so these are all the surface marker okay ma if you isolated a stem cells na it should express cluster differentiation cd73 cd90 105 and it should not express cd34 negative to cd45 and and the other markers if it is so then only you have isolated a MSCs, or else it is not. Okay, wa. Well, and also the second differentiation potential, the isolated cells should be osteogenic, adipogenic, and chondrogenic, which means the differentiation potential. Okay. And uh, the other characteristics mean your isolated cell should be adherent to plastic. Okay, wa. Well, so when you do a subculture, it should adhere to plastic. Then it should have spindle shape morphology. if you have if your isolated cell have all these characteristics then only the people will agree that it is mesenchymal stem cells okay va well, it is not necessary to perform all these the left side surface markers either the first uh, uh, three is compulsory you have to do okay va well, and later uh, uh, hladr and uh, 3445 is very very important but so spindle shape morphology jump if you see under microscope you will come to know so that is so differentiation mean i have already explained that mesenchymal um, stem cells can be differentiated into adipose tissue osteocytes chondrocytes myocytes and cardiomyocytes etc etc and this is what the thing so that here listen when uh, here uh, expansion um, so this is the uh, mesenchymal stem cells isolated from any of the above origin bone marrow umbilical cord adipose tissue placenta anywhere okay va well, if you provide a suitable expansion medium okay fibrosis growth factor then it will uh, uh, differentiate into adipocyte osteoblast chondrocyte neuron myocyte etc etc okay so this is what the characteristics of stem cells so stem cells have three main functions what are they plasticity warming and engraftment so so this is another very very important functions for plasticity mean it has the potential to change a differentiation as i as i told you plasticity mean potential to change other types of cells like hepatocytes neuro, uh, neurons etc etc forming is a very important uh, features of uh, uh, mesenchymal stem cells forming so if you inject a mesenchymal stem cells uh, 
through intravenous route in a animal okayla or rat ku eduthu neenga or msc isolate pandreenga these stem cells adu eduthu or rat oda iv la or tail vein la inject panna adu vandu young tissue damage irukko anga direct ah poidum for example neenga for example neenga enna pandreenga or animal eduthu adoda liver damage induce pandreenga adhe animal ku நீங்க என்ன பண்றீங்க ஒரு ஃபைவ் டேஸ் கழிச்சோ இல்ல மறுநாளோ நீங்க மீசர் கேபிள் ஸ்டெம் செல்ஸ் வந்து ஐசோலேட் பண்ணி அதை ஒரு இன்ஜெக்ஷன் கொடுக்குறீங்க இன்ட்ராவில் இன்ஜெக்ஷன் என்ன பண்ணுவோம் இந்த பிளட்ல இருந்து போற மீசர் கேபிள் ஸ்டெம் செல்ஸ் வில் கரெக்ட்லி ஹோமிங் இன் டு த டிஷ்யூ டேமேஜ் ஏரியா தட் இல் இட் வில் கோ அண்ட் ஸ்டே அட் தி லிவர் அதுக்குதான் ஹோமிங் அப்ப என்ன பண்ணலான்னா இதை வந்து யூஸ்ஃபுல் ஃபார் தெரப்பியூட்டிக் டார்கெட்ஸ் ஸோ யூ கேன் கோட் த ட்ரக் or nanoparticle with the mesocapsule stem cells thereby if you inject mean it will go and de- deliver the nanoparticle coated drugs anti cancer drugs into the injured area what is called as homing homing na ena to travel the site of tissue damage so it will sense the tissue damage and it will go and stay there uh, ne- next one is engraftment to unite with other tissue mean if you inject the uh, mesocapsule stem cells mean when it go to liver mean it will stay there and it will engraft there which mean it will unite the uh, the native cells of liver that is hepatocytes so look at that an msc as a modulatory effects an msc can secrete this much of soluble factor hepatocytes growth factor epidermal growth factor interleukins tnf alpha collagen various type of interleukin il10 antioxidant Uh, uh, i mean anti inflammatory uh, interleukin fgf tgf transforming growth factor and hcf uh, vascular endothelial growth factor okay so matrix metalloproteinases there are several growth factors it expresses thereby it supports function suppresses inflammation inhibits apoptosis and it can fight against fibrosis and it will differentiate the cells so here if you see as i told you it is a sim- simple technique how you are going to use stem cells for mm, nanoparticle mean you can coat the nanoparticle with the uh, stem cells thereby you can target the tissue in animals or in humans for example uh, you have to isolate a t- uh, 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 mesenchymal stem cells from a tissue and you can coat with the nanoparticles and if you inject into the uh, animal mean it will sense the disease area and thereby it produces it will modulate the disease environment thereby it will decrease the disease progression okay va so here if you see it is uh, it is simply called as mass mesenchymal stem cells because it is isolated from the uh, cells and it is nanoparticle this is nanoparticle labeled mesenchymal stem cells so this is having the good uh, uh, forming property okay so that uh, that is why mesen chemical stem cells as a targeted delivery vehicle since it sense the damage area mean okay then nanoparticles can internalize into mesen chemical stem cells which mean uh, if you uh, incubate nanoparticle and mesen chemical stem cells together in in vitro nanoparticles will enter into the stem cells so if you take this nanoparticle uh, coated uh, i mean uh, msc coated nanoparticles we inject me it will deliver the nanoparticle to the specific area in the area. what is called stem cell therapy so that you can administer stem cells alone because the stem cells having lot of uh, trophic uh, tropism property and it is secret soluble factors thereby it can modulate the disease environment second one is msc's mesenchymal stem cells can be uh, coated with uh, um, nanoparticles so the nanoparticle and mesenchymal stem cells combination of the protection protective effect the third one is the mesenchymal stem cells can be coated with nanoparticle as well as anti cancer drug so the main problem of anti cancer drug is the homing the, the thing is the targeted de- delivery presence of nanoparticle and mesenchymal stem cells can selectively deliver the anti cancer drug into the cancer area so that uh, this the, the nanoparticle can also be used as a labeling agent when it combined with the mesenchymal stem cells so without further delay let me explain something to show you 
please wait for a while. So in this one, uh, how we have to, so in our recent studies, uh, so this is what the application of. So I have explained about something about mesen capacitance cells. Here, how the nanoparticles can be used to, in cell culture. For example, in this study, we have used, if you see, uh, uh, if you see here, so this is the study. In this one, the enterococcus bacteria is used to uh, used to synthesize the golden nano uh, golden nanoparticle. Okay, well, and we have tested its anti-cancer potential against the human colorectal cancer cell line. That is H229. We have seen this cell line. And for example, uh, so as uh, as Rajesh has said, so these things are now uh, characterization. Second, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to share something. Please enable. Okay, it's not possible for me to share. Hello, are you there? Yeah, yes, sir. I'm there, sir. Just wait. Actually, I want, yeah, I want to share something. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay, sir. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, listen. Uh, here, uh, let's go. Uh, I'm going to show you some papers uh, in which we have uh, studied in animal particles in cell culture. For example, in this one, we have synthesized uh, nanoparticles gold nanoparticles using enterococcus species, and we have tested it against human colorectal cancer cell lines, okay? H229 uh, cells, they are colorectal cancer cell line. As Rajesh sir told you, see, listen, here, then nanoparticles are synthesized, and it is characterized uh, using, um, using UV spectrophotometer uh, spectrum, and also in transmission uh, ultramicroscope uh, analysis, so through that we can see the shapes and the size of the uh, synthesized nanoparticles. And here the morphology of cells, HD229 cells, uh, which are treated with uh, which which are treated with uh, gold nanoparticles. And this is a cytotoxicity. When concentration increases, the cytotoxicity increases. This is a nanoparticle treated H229 cells. So this is a reactive action species. So this gold chloride nano uh, this is golden nanoparticles can induce the reactive oxygen species in cancer cell line, thereby it induces cytotoxicity. So, so um, in this, I will show you this one here. So here, you see. So here, if you see, uh, uh, so this is the thematic uh, mechanism of what we have done in this uh, paper. And we have used gold chloride, okay? And we have, uh, we have incubated with enterococcus bacteria species. This bacteria converted this gold chloride into gold nanoparticle here. Okay, when this gold chloride nanoparticle, when treated to the colon cancer cells, what it does, it increases reactive action species. When reactive action species increases intracellularly, then it will induce the apoptosis or it will cause us membrane damage. So that's what it does. This, when increases reactive action species, it, uh, it induces toxicity to the mitochondria where the mitochondrial membrane potential is decreased. So from mitochondria, cytochrome C is released. This cytochrome is uh, activates the caspase enzyme, which is responsible for apoptosis, and it induces apoptosis in cancer cell line. So that this gold nanoparticle synthesized from enterococcus can be a cytotoxic. It is having pro-apoptotic potential in cancer cell line, means this uh, nanoparticle kills cancer cell line. So it is a anti it has anti cancer potential. Okay, so this is one of our study. And another one is uh, sorry.
sir can you able to see this see this one yes, can you able to yeah yes sir yes sir yes okay yes, fine so so in in this one also we have synthesized a gold nanoparticles okay and we have tested it in uh, fg2 cells liver cancer cells so so liver cancer cell it is a similar study and uh, i will go here and here if, if you see uh, yeah similarly the same gold chloride is uh, converted into gold uh, nanoparticle using enterococcus species where it is uh, also induced a cytotoxicity via apoptosis in fg2 cells so that here the here our main aim is you can synthesize nanoparticle from any source from microbial source from chemical source or mechanical source any source why nowadays people are concentrating on uh, uh, biological source that is uh, um, microbial source mean there is a too much of the is with uh, your um, a chemical uh, con uh, conversion of nanoparticles that is why plants are being used and uh, microbes are being used to synthesize a nanoparticle once you synthesize you can test these nanoparticles in cancer cell lines if your nanoparticles has the ability to induce cytotoxicity or um, or cell proliferation inhibition then you can say your uh, your synthesizing nanoparticle is having anti cancer potential so this is what the thing and uh, i think i have done and i have i have several things to show but uh, due to time constraints i just want to complete uh, now uh, so and thank you for your patience listening and uh, i am very sorry to uh, for a initial technical problem Let me stop share this. Yeah, ma'am, I'm done. Sir. Yeah, I'm done, ma'am. Okay, sir. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. as we came in as we came to end of our session i request you to post your questions and chat box and sir is ready to clear all your doubts sir one student is asking sir yes please ask without any hesitation please ask if you have any language problem you can ask me in tamil also i can help okay, okay so at okay. bsc and ms level you will have several doubts Yes, so please sir. ask me i will simply explain even if it is wrong also no issues okay sir yeah. sir which type of media is used for cell culture sir actually cell culture has several I, uh, as i told you know cell culture if you say me it is a common term okay there are several cell lines are there primary cell cultures are there okay so primary cells mean uh, primary cells will have unique way of uh, uh, culture medium but cell lines no cell lines have different different cells have different different culture medium for example cancer cells have tmem with low glucose and 10% fbs and uh, 1% uh, streptomycin and uh, 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 antibiotics so that the, the culture medium is depends on the uh, the selection of cells thank you sir and another one question sir yes. what is aneuploid chromosome cell how is it identified aneuploid chromosome ma, ma it is too technical it is not to be frank i have not identified it okay va i have not identified it is a two genetical alteration and uh, you, you, you have to do some immortalization techniques for that hmm? yeah. 
actually it is too early to know all these things now please forget about uh, please forget about that anaphylactic and all <clears throat> Okay, so thank you, sir. Next, please. And another question, sir. How to identify stem cells, sir? Yeah. See, as I told you, if you follow a procedure by which, as I told you, you know, if you isolate the umbilical cord and you have to cut and you have to put it in a suitable culture medium, DMEM, with a 10% FBM in a plastic flask mean, the cells will come out after seven days and you will get a pure population in a couple of weeks. In pure population, if you get a pure stem cells mean, you have to go for inter, uh, certain characteristic studies. For example, as a Rajesh I told, you know, if it is a gold nanoparticle mean, it should have this. If it is a silver nanoparticle mean, it should have this. Like that, if the cells are isolated, if the mesenchymal cells are isolated mean, you should have some certain characteristics. For example, it, it should have um, uh, plastic adherence. It should have spindle cell morphology. And also, I have told you several surface markers, which should be positive and negative. Then only we have to confirm the isolated cells or mesenchymal stem cells. <laughs> Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And another one question, sir. The characterization yeah. of progenitor cells, sir. Characterization yes. of progenitor cells. Uh, yes, the characterization of progenitor cell is progenitor cell will not grow on plastic surface. It will grow on collagenous surface. So collagen coating, the flask only we can use. Okay, sir. It, it will not adhere on plastic surface. So that is, uh, for example, if you isolate your progenitor cells and if you put your passage and if you maintain me, it will not at all uh, adhere to the plastic surface. Thank you, sir. And next question, can we produce all organs by using stem cell? Yes, of course. Actually, uh, so far reported uh, studies are uh, saying that uh, even hair follicle also having a uh, stem cell. So all organs, almost in all internal organs, endodermal organs, have mesenchymal stem cells population. Uh, I told you, you know, even endometrium polyps and menstruous blood, menstruous blood also having mesenchymal stem cells. And the gingival tissue, everything, gingival pulp, pulp no, beneath the uh, teeth. So everything is having uh, stem cells. Uh, but you can't say all now. But uh, there are several studies are reporting that so many tissues are uh, having this stem cell population. Thank you, sir. And next question, yeah. sir. What is BPS and FBS? How is function in DHEM medium? Ma, ma, PBS is nothing but phosphate buffer saline. Ma. It is used as a medium. It, it is used like a saline. Da. Okay, la. FBS is a Fetal bovine serum or fetal cough serum. Other than the nutrients, number cell can the how cell will survive. We have to provide certain nutrients. Serum and an anning a model and blooded green in the animal and the blooded green less serum. Other than the bloodless serum, other than the serum. Other than the animal could purify any good cross cell culture. There are only serum will provide support. Ninga talic serum for ring a head watch at the serum for ring a end of ring a serum. Serum will provide a nutrients to the hair. Ade Madri, this serum that is. Passport, I mean FBS and FCS. FBS means fetal bovine serum or fetal cough serum will provide a nutrient supply to the cells so that the cells will grow. DMEM is a culture uh, media, other base, other which is the nutrients put for other than the uh, uh, cells will grow. Then next. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> then, sir, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Any, any questions? No. Okay, sir. That's all, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir, for clearing all our doubts. And thank you for your wonderful okay. session, sir. It was so informative and clear, thank sir. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. As we are running out of our time, we are ending our session here. Granted, granted you will shift you to a higher frequency and you will attract much better things. 
Now I invite Ms. A. Sasikala, Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, to propose the out of thanks. Please, ma'am. A very good afternoon to all one and all present here. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is show, shown in acts. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. Let me first of all start by giving glory to Almighty God for making today occasion a resounding success. First up, first and foremost, I thank our uh, management for giving permission to conduct this workshop. Thank you, sirs. I am grateful to our principal, Dr. M. Inbavalli, ma'am, for her encouragement. Her able guidance has always encouraged us. I thank her for her kindness, interest, and continued support. Thank you, ma'am. Now it is time to thank our today resource persons, Dr. S. Rajesh Kumar, Associate Professor, Chief Scientist, Nano Medicine Lab, Department of Pharmacology, Savita Dental College, Savita Institute of Medical and Technical Sciences, Chennai. Thank you, sir. And also, Dr. D. Eldarison, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Savita Dental College, Savita Institute of Medical and Technical Sciences, Chennai, for sharing their knowledge about nanotechnology and cell lines. Despite on their busy schedule, they have found time to grace this occasion. Thank you, sir. I also express my thanks to our PRO, B. Shakti Mala ma'am for her unstained support for this workshop. My heartfelt thanks to heads of various department and faculty members for their valuable contribution, guidance and encouragement in all our efforts. My special thanks to Ms. R. Malarkudi, convener and head department of biochemistry for organizing this valuable workshop during this pandemic situation. I also thank our department faculty members for their untiredness efforts for the successful completion for this workshop. Last but not least, I thank the participants of various departments and colleges for making this program a great success. Once again, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, feedback link is posted in chat box. Kindly fill it. Within two to three days, you, you will be receive your certificates. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.